45,000 Rand per month. Even me, I want. But the pressure, right for dummies. And you, Zawamo. Agile, it made sure, such a sure. huge difference. Like, whoa, that's what business analysis is all about. I'm gaining weight. <laughs> Just do it. How flop out of flop. Don't forget to subscribe to Sasha Bella Fed. Welcome to the Millennials Corner, where most of us are lost in a trend. What do you do, Buffet, to this is season two, episode seven of TMC Podcast, where tech meets creativity? My name is Guy Luyanda. But before we get started on today's episode, I have some interesting news to share with you all, right? So the team and I went on to the back end to see what's happening and what we found was rather staggering. We found that 66.2% of people who've previously watched our content have not yet subscribed, which brings me to the next ax and that is if you are finding value in our content and haven't already done so, please hit that subscribe button because it definitely does help keep the magic at TMC alive and from our end we promise to keep doing what we do and that is to consistently improve on the quality of the information as well as the caliber of the guests that keep coming onto the podcast well we do this with hopes that the information they share will help you you know as you maneuver your journey as a creativity and tech enthusiast right so on to today's episode now the bar has been set we are joined by Massinger, the BA, and if you're wondering what business analyst is, please stick around because on this episode, not only will she tell us what that is, she'll tell us how much they make, what it takes to be uh, a dope business analyst among so many other things. But let me let me give you a backstory on Massinger now. Massinger is currently working as an agile business analyst for BDO, and after facilitating workshops with over 5,000 small business owners, I can without a shadow of a doubt say Hora Masinde is a professional digital marketing skills trainer. She's a founder of Consult the BA. If you'd like to visit their channel, their YouTube channel, please check the link in the description below. I think it's also important to share that she recently trained 60 digital marketing graduates through a 10 week award-winning course with Meta and this is courtesy of Digify Africa Pro. So as you can already see, and I think it will be better if we give her a chance so we can learn from the horse's mouth. Before we get started even, I think it's also important to mention that this episode is slightly different. You will see that throughout uh, the session you wouldn't be seeing the host but rather hearing his voice and this is because during production we lost the host shot right um but yeah i mean it was a tech error and we hope to fix this for the next episode and you know many more after that uh yeah without any further ado buffet too let's get into it uh Masintra, welcome thank you guys yeah you look so stunning thank you uh, <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Happy yes. to be here. I'm happy that you guys are diversifying your guests now because yes. in the beginning it was gents, gents, gents and I'm like, <laughs> a red flag. Sure. What's going on here? So it was nice to see part two in the last episode. So yeah, keep yeah, it going, guys. It was really beautiful. Yeah. You say you are okay. There's always... Okay. Yeah, you said you are okay. I asked, how are you? You said, I'm fine. Oh yeah, I'm yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's always two versions to that answer. The short one and the longer one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, should we get into the longer one? Um, yeah, let's get into sure, it. Sure. Um, I'm doing good. Um, I'm in a good place. I'm happy. Sure. Uh, taking it a day at a time. Uh, yeah, I'm humaning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, as man. best as I can <laughs> put it. I'm humaning. We try, man. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, so, um, but usually, before we get started here on TMC, there's this thing we call it. Um, a nice breaker, cause who I get like a part actually from that episode that we call it a nice breaker. <laughs> so we do that just to ease you in, my boy. The game that plays along, but it's what you need. Okay. Yeah. So how it plays? I'm gonna show you a bunch of pictures. Okay. I'm going to add text to complete a meme. Okay. Sweet. So I'm seeing the computer. Sounds fun. 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 S
your side? Oh, it's open. On me? Nah. Yeah. So you can just move to the next slide. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this would be POV. Um, it's mid month and you're out of cash to you... top up on your baraking. What do they call it? Toiletries. Segunzi, ma. You gotta mix that up with some water <laughs> so we can go a long way. Yeah, something along those lines. Sure, sure. POV, it's payday. Yeah. Oh, let it rain. It's raining money. Oh, yeah. yeah. Next one. Next one. Yo. <laughs> um. Yo. Load shedding. Yeah. This one. Oh, yeah. I say it's load shedding and you haven't cooked. <laughs> Yo. Yeah, oh my gosh. Um, Yo, uh, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, actually, I know a good one for this one. Um, how you look when you step out of Uber? Because they be stinking these days. I, I don't know what's happening, but yo, guys. Okay, the next one. Yo. For me, this is like when somebody assigns you a job at half past four on a Friday. <laughs> like, leave me alone. Like, hey! How am I going to do Yeah. Mm -mm. <laughs> this is our last one. Um, this one. Yeah. I feel like, because this is the last one, I'll, I'll make it a bit deeper. But like, once there's something that you have been fighting on your own, um, and then you eventually get to a point where you don't make the same mistakes again, and then you celebrate yourself. Mm. Yeah, that, that happy dance you do inside. So I quite the new game season. Thanks for, 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 for doing that. And yeah, if it does how we come to the end of our episode, Katala. <laughs> <laughs> we just got st I just arrived. <laughs> so yeah, but uh, yeah, thanks for doing that, Lorena. Let's 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 just uh, kick it off. Uh Hokala, um, it's probably a lot of people who are just who are seeing your face for the first time. Some probably already know you, but they don't know the things they learn Kore, but you know, they make you who you are. So let's talk about that. Who is Ooh, Masint? Uh, um, okay. We'll actually jump into your upbringing and all the shandies now that the ice is, you know, officially broken. Okay. Yeah. Um, do I look at you or the camera? Uh, you can talk I to can, me. I can. To you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I feel like you kind of know me. <laughs> <laughs> um, to the people that are watching, um, I'm Masintle. I go by Masintle, the BA, um, and... The BA has a lot to do with work and generally how I feel about myself. Um, apart from work, the person outside of Umsebenzi, I am first born of five. I've got five siblings. Um, and no, four siblings. I'm the fifth one. Yeah, first born of five. Um, I grew up in Amondeview, that's the south of Joburg. Born and bred in Joburg. My name is a Tswana name, but I actually speak Zulu, predominantly Zulu. A lot of people think that I'm Tswana because Masinte. But yeah, predominantly Zulu. I can be, speak Tswana and Susutu. And the things that I like doing is going out. I like going to different places and having first time experiences. I absolutely love going to restaurants and trying stuff that I can't pronounce or things that I've never seen or eaten before. I'm very big on adventure, exploring, and I'm very open to new experiences. So I get to do that for myself by like trying out different restaurants and being bougie. Um, I like champagne. Um, I like dogs. I really want a dog. I want to be a dog mom. I love plants. I would love to turn my space into a jungle. So I'm very happy to see that they've got plants in the space here today. Although they're dying. Oh, please take care of your plants. Nee, I'm like, <laughs> like, feed your plants. Please give them sunlight. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love plants. I love going out. Um, 
my favorite type of outing um, at some point in my life it used to be groove I'm not so much of a groovist anymore but I like going to like um, picnics and painting and soirees yeah stuff like that um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when you said you 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 enjoy going out I almost said Msisi can you please show my center out <laughs> <laughs> because I like doing things that our guests like. Oh you my know, gosh. but then I had to like ah, pick up. So ah, oh, okay, so ah, ah, means ah, going ah. out as in going out, not like literally yes. go on the door. I should copyright his yeah. so you <laughs> never fit to this levels to this thing, you know. Um yeah, thanks so much for sharing that. I think I'm getting a little bit of uh, an insight into who you are. Some of the things that I didn't know, like the fact that you enjoy soirees. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what that is, but I'll Google it later. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll Google it later. So <laughs> you have mustn't um, the B A. And I hear him say the same for other people say you can mustn't the ba of it is not the ba. <laughs> How did you pick up that title? Okay, so I can say it started twenty nineteen, twenty eighteen, twenty eighteen, twenty nineteen, somewhere there. Um, I was basically manifesting. Um, at the time, I wasn't a BA, but I was like, I'm going to put this to my name so it sticks yeah. and I like affirm it until it becomes a thing. And then I started calling myself Masantle the BA and it stuck and everybody's like, Masantle the BA. Like, sure. are you talking about the BA? So it just makes sense. Like, it, it makes it, sense. Yeah, yeah it yeah, sticks. Yeah. Like, Basically the BA. Um, but like apart from that, I feel like I'm badass. I like I've always been like, I'm badass. You know, I gotta be badass in everything that I do. Sure. You know, you, I just need to always have that badass experience. So mustn't play the badass. Mustn't play the BA. And I was like, mm. Mm, I like that. So let's talk about what that is. Okay, professionally a BA is a business analyst. That's what the BA stands for. Sure. Yeah. Should I get... Yeah, I mean, tell us what, uh, you know, business analysts do. Okay, so basically, um, if I'm going to put it in like fancy terms, a BA is a business analyst and the responsibility of a business analyst, like Guy introduced in the beginning of the show, um, you liaise between business people in technology um, and the goal of liaising between business people and technology is to enable change. So if you're working in a business environment, you need to make sure that whatever change that is that you want to um, implement in your business, you need to have an in-depth analysis of how that change is going to impact or benefit the people in relation to technology and in relation to the business, the organization itself. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, that's what business analysis is all about. Sure. If I had to explain to my six-year-old brother and he asked me, what do you do? I'd say, <clears throat> I look at where I work. Um, I have to look at everything, like the whole business. I have to look, okay, this business wants to make money. And if they say they want to make money, I need to look how much money do they have? What opportunities are out there in the economy, in terms of politics, within the business itself? What opportunities are there within the people and the resources that they have in order to say they want this thing that they have? A simple example that I can make is um, let's say a guy, for instance, says, um, Masintle, I would like you to come in as a business analyst and what I need you to do is to help me get a Ferrari. So what I'm going to do, at, look at Guy as a business. Um, let's say Guy the brand as a business. I say, this is Guy. Now we're going to look at how much Guy, how much does Guy make? How much does Guy spend? Does Guy, uh, how far does Guy typically travel? Where does he travel to? Um, what kind of roads are there where Guy usually travels? Um, who else is in his life? Does he need to transport maybe on a daily basis, on a monthly basis? How far else does he need to travel outside maybe his work proximity? Look at all of those things. Look at the cost of petrol right now. 
the Ferrari that he says he wants to buy, how much is petrol, how much is insurance. Um, just look at all of those factors and say, okay, guy, based on this information that I've gathered about you, I've made an analysis about all of these points that I've touched on, I think it's not advisable for you to get a Ferrari because your finances will not enable you to get a Ferrari. So rather buy a bicycle so that you can move from point A to point B and maybe you get a little courage for your groceries because I've picked up out of my analysis that it would benefit you if you could get a little basket on the side of your bicycle so that it would um, help the load instead of you thinking you need to get a Ferrari. So mm. that's how I... I would explain sure, it in sure. simple ways. These are the kind of careers that were never spoken about. Yeah. In school. Yeah. Uh, they're really foreign. And hearing someone like Masenta who grew up um, it makes me wonder Hora, where did they get this information? Mm. You know, so <laughs> let's tap into that. Where did you learn about the BA? Like, so, like, Hora, you even fell in love so much that you would even want it on your title. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I agree with everything that you're saying. Um, I only discovered business analysis some three, four years ago. Mm. Um, I also didn't know about business analysis until I found out about Just it. Just four years? Yeah, exactly. So um, I'm going to have 10 years of experience when you speak about <laughs> it. <laughs> Thank you. That is so flattering. <laughs> That's badass. <laughs> That's badass. Exactly. Oh, yeah. That's what I strive for. Sure. Yes. Sure. Um, but I didn't know about business analysis until I got the opportunity to become a business analyst. So we'll go back like a little bit, some three, four years ago. Um, so when we were at Umuzi, I'm sure like everybody who watches TMC knows what Umuzi <laughs> is at this point. Um, but if you don't know, Umuzi, the nonprofit organization, that's where I met all the amazing people in this room. For me to discover business analysis, when I went to Umuzi, I went to Umuzi to um, become a UX strategist, right? That's the department that I was in, strategy, which was awesome. Um, however, um, while we were focusing on UX strategy, um, the qualification that we, we got um, at Umuzi in my department, the UX strategist, uh, we were working towards getting a national certificate in business analysis. Business analysis has a lot to do with strategy, basically. You gather a lot of data, you use your mind, you make sense of um, the data and the feedback that you're getting so that you can create solutions that will work for the business. UX strategy would be the user. Okay. So it, it works hand in glove. That's when I discovered business analysis. Um, I didn't really know what business analysis is, what it's about. I just knew me, I'm a UX strategist yeah, yeah, yeah. and <laughs> I'm going to be a UX strategist in digital. Uh, That's where my focus is going to be. Social media, strategy for social media, so, um, strategy for branding. That's where my mind was at the time. Um, and then, yeah, I did my business analysis certificate at Umuzi, did really well, um, happy with the journey that I had at Umuzi, um, got my certificate, um, and then straight after graduating at Umuzi, I got placed at an insurance company. And when I got into that insurance company, they knew that I'm from Umuzi, and I, I, these are the qualifications that I have. But I haven't fully practice in the corporate environment, what business analysis is all about or UX strategy is all about. So that's where I got the opportunity to get in depth. Before that, I was working for a small company, like a clothing brand, basically. Yeah. So that's why I was implementing a lot of the things that I was learning while I was at Umuzi. But like formally or within a corporate space, yeah, my first experience was in the insurance company that I worked for. And then, yeah, um, yeah. Three months after, the business analysis in the company were like, you've, you've got a thing for this. Yeah. <laughs> you should stick here. Because I was doing change management when I just got in, sure, sure. Um, mm -hmm. which was also something I've never heard of. So I was like, okay, no, I'm, I'm going to do, I'm going to do this. I see I'm good at it. I'm sharp. I'm analytical. It just works. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah let me not resist something that is 
easy to me and I'm, it's, it's coming naturally to me and I'm passionate about it. So let me go with what works for me. You speak about your colleagues telling you, Hori, you've got to think for this, right? So, and that brings me to my next question, um, which is what would be, you know, your typical qualities for, you know, a good BA? Okay. Competencies. Yeah. Okay, because uh, we're breaking it down for our viewers. Sure. So there's the technical part of things and then the soft part. Yeah. Like, um, one thing that we were taught and it was always reinforced at Umuzi is you need to have the hard skills, which is the technical skills, and you need to have soft skills as well. I think one thing I always say um, within my, my career as a business analyst is that one thing I think that stood out for me was my soft skills. Like even when I was struggling technically, but my soft skills align with what a business analyst needs to be and what to do. Sure. And what is that in terms of the soft skills? Um, you need to have strong leadership skills. Um, you need to know how to lead people, not be afraid to be in a room and be in the forefront and to get things going because- You do that really well. Thank you, yeah. thank you. <laughs> I worked hard on that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you really need to have that kind of a characteristic competency. If you don't have it, you need to like work towards it. So leadership, um, and you can't be a leader if you can't speak to people. So you need good communication skills. Um, Another thing to be a good leader, you need to know how to negotiate. You're always going to have people behind you as a leader that you need to convince. You need to show them ways in which they can see things differently because everybody's going to stand on their ground and say, this is what I think, this is what I believe. But you need to be able to communicate with them to say, there's another side to this that we need to look at. How about that? Yeah. Um, so yeah, you need communication skills. You need to know how to negotiate. Um, you need to know how to manage relationships with the people that you work with. Sure, um, sure. Talking to you could be my entry to the next person who's going to give me the information that I need in order to bring about change within the business. Yeah. Um, you know, getting information from people, not everybody's a talker. So, yeah, you really need to have people skills to talk to people and be persistent. Because I'll talk to Guy just now, and Guy will give me this much information, but he has this much experience and this much knowledge. It's just because maybe Guy is an introvert. So you need to have an understanding of people, um, and you need to be patient. You really need to be patient. People are busy. Uh, people are focusing on their jobs. People have their own lives. They have their own issues. So you always have to extend grace and be compassionate. If somebody, you know, throws you off one day, you have to take it and go back again and be like, hey, um, um, how's today going? Can we try again? Can you please fill me in on this and that and get whatever you need? You need to because you can't work on assumptions as a business analyst. Everything needs to be factual. So that's the soft skills. And then the hard technical skills would be, um, you need to know how to take info, this information that you're getting from people by using your soft skills, you need to know how to put it in a way that will make sense to everybody else. Because people think differently. Some people think in pictures. Some people think in numbers. Some people think high level. Some people think in, in details. So you have to be able to take all of the information that you're getting from all of these different sources and put it in a, in a, in a diagram. That's where I'd say a good business analyst needs to start. That was your first question, how to be a good business analyst. Put all that information into a picture. Put it into a diagram. What that does, it helps you take that diagram and say, what, what are we looking at? Sure, sure. Because if I'm, gonna, if I'm gonna describe something to you and say, no, there's this thing, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cube, it's a cube. You're gonna be like, no rocks. Mm. Someone's gonna say, no rocks. Sure. Someone else is gonna say a square. Someone else is gonna be like, you so know. So now you have people in a team who are basically talking about the same thing, but pulling in different directions. You know, because people see things differently. Sure. People have different experiences. That's why you got to take all of those things. Then you see, like, what is the information that you're gathering saying? If there's a common thread, you ask 10 people. Out of those 10 people, the one that's sticking out the most is that, no, it's actually this type of a cube. Yeah. So paint the picture on a paper and say, are we talking about this? Yeah. 
then people will be like, yeah, that's what I mean. That's okay. what I've been saying to you the whole time. <laughs> and you're like, oh, no, I just needed to clarify. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so apart from the drawing, which was, would be the first part of putting down that data into a piece of paper so everybody can concur that, yes, this is what we're all saying. This is the picture that we're all seeing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, once you've got that, another technical competency that you would need is knowing how to document um, everything that's being said. You need to put it in a way that will be understood by the different stakeholders, which are the people involved within the organization that you're working for or the end, the end users. So this thing that you just said, yes, we're going to be building a cube. You need to put it in a way that the copywriter will understand it so that when they write copy for this cube, they write it in a way that the end user, the person who's outside of the organization will be able to understand the message that's being conveyed. Before it even gets to the copywriter, there's the developers, the people that are actually gonna be creating this cube. I need to say, what we need is a cube. It must have color, one, orange, yellow, blue, white, like you need as a business analyst one thing my mentor has always said is write for dummies sure. like just assume that no one is smart enough to get what you're saying and it's actually saved me from a lot of trouble and it's it's helped me refine my skill as a business analyst because whenever i'm documenting i don't assume that guy is just going to understand because you're smart enough to understand i don't know how many years experience you have as a dev you could be three months in but you're in the company sure. so i need to write in a way that i make sure that you're going to understand that i said a cube must have one, two, three, four, five colors. Yeah. Out of all of these colors, it must be yellow, blue, green. I must list everything. I must make sure that I'm documenting in a way that the, the graphic designer that's going to create this cube, it must have this black outline. You know what I'm saying? The details of everything. There must be a black outline. And then when the, the graphic designer gets this requirements document, they must say, okay, based on my expertise as a graphic designer, I think we should keep the space as in a centimeter because it's going to work well for the end user. Sure. So yes, I leave it to you, the experts, but everything that I'm documenting must be interpreted in a way that the people will be able to develop for our end users and it needs to work for us. Sure, so sure, that's sure. where the liaising between people, the technology and the organization comes in. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, those are some of the hard skills like diagramming, stakeholder management, um, hosting meetings. You need to know how to host good meetings. Like don't... Yeah, I know, meetings. Yeah, yeah like, Don't just have an agenda. You need to gather information. You need to know how to investigate. And yeah, you need to write proper English. <laughs> <laughs> what other technical skills can I think of? Yeah, that's all that... There's a lot of systems and tools sure, um, sure, sure. that different companies use. Um, but yeah, for now, I think... I think we'll actually look into like those at a very high level later. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to ask you about the common challenges that you face in the space. But before we uh, get into, into okay. that, uh, in your description for the, you know, the solves and the, the, the soft and the hard skills that you need to be a, a, a good BA, you uh, account for a lot of people. Like you spoke about writers, you spoke about designers, which, give me a, which gives me a sense that you work in a technical team, right? And there's a lot of people which you, act with, um, which you actually need to keep at the top of your mind when you are doing your work. So what would be uh, the most common challenges that you would face when working specifically in a digital team? This, this is a question that comes up a lot when you go for interviews. Yeah. So take notes. So maybe, maybe <laughs> you got a job for you. You never know. <laughs> okay. So, and also it's different for everyone. It's going to be different for every business analyst, depend, depending on their strength and weakness. It's going to be different for everyone, depending on the type of organization that they work for, because companies are not the same. Sure. Um, but for me, um, what I've experienced so far, I think the most challenging thing is um, getting information from people. Yeah, that's very challenging. Like I said earlier that maybe I'm speaking to Guy and I need to like get requirements from Guy, but Guy gives me this much information. Or it's not that you're going to give me this much information, you have this much time. So um, 
that's the, I'd say that's the most challenging part, um, have, getting information from people, um, maintaining relationships as well. It's not always going to be easy because sometimes you're really under pressure, like it's just hitting the fan. Yeah. Like, yeah, boo, yeah. like <laughs> we are over. do you understand? Oh, yeah. Like deadlines are tied as hell. I don't know how hell is, but I could imagine <laughs> hell to be the most uncomfortable place you could think of. And sometimes it gets really intense. Yeah. So under all of that intense pressure, there's the pressure to deliver the work itself. Now, on top of that, I need to deal with a guy who is in a bad mood. And it's not even my fault. I didn't do anything to you, but you're going to give me hell because you're going through hell. You know, in English, they say misery likes company. So it happens. So that's the most difficult thing that you always have to center yourself and try to not take things personal. You know, when somebody is, is yo, they're showing you flames. People no, will show you flames. No, lemon coming out of a lemon. Oh, <laughs> like, give me a break, bro. I'm just trying to get my bread like you. But no, you're not going to get that break. So I think that's very challenging. Um, yeah, that's the most challenging thing at the moment. Just always having to remain patient, uh, be compassionate towards the next person. Um, but in the beginning, everything was challenging because yeah, it was a yeah. new space. Um, like we spoke, Uguti, we didn't know about businesses, business analysis. I just discovered it now. So doing something completely different, something new, yeah, that was difficult. Now I'm in a better position because things that used to take me three months, I can do it maybe in one month or a week. It's because it's I've developed that skill now. But then, yo, ha. Go ahead, if, yo, no. especially the documentation. <laughs> sure. Guys, don't be a business analyst if you don't want to write because you will write. Easy, the There's business. a lot of admin. Easy, the a lot. <laughs> like you could write a book if you if you are a business and I swear because yeah. wow there's a lot of admin yeah I can only imagine yeah. wow it's a lot I mean, I mean that that uh, kind of like covers our next question about the common <laughs> challenges because yeah, yeah. it's challenging yeah. in the BA mm. yeah so um, I actually you know I think there's also a gap between how to get these jobs and knowing about them you know, uh, but now I kind of like know or have an idea of what BAs do. And since my center mentioned that I'm from Umu, I did it go Umu, maybe someone might also want to take that route. Or there's other, you know, uh, routes sailing where you could go through to become a BA. You can go to university, you know, for all we care. You can do it however way. But then now, how do you get into the industry? And knowing that you recently got your job, we can actually use like a practical example of how did that happen for you? Well, it will not be the same process for everybody. Yeah, But that's how true. did you find your current job? And then, yeah, how was that decision? Like, how did you know what this is exactly what I wanted to do? Okay, for context. So I started at Umuzi, for those that don't know. Yeah. I started at Umuzi. Through Umuzi, I was placed at the insurance company. The insurance company, I worked there for three months as an intern. And then after that, I was absorbed in as a business analyst. And I've been a business analyst there for three years now. So what Guy is referring to is the new job that I have that I just got. New job for my name. Yo, it makes you that happy, the new job. Is this a show? Bruh. Oh, wow. Oh, oh. <laughs> you can't even hide it. Oh, wow. Wow. I can't wait to watch now. Okay. Um, so I just got a new job. with. This is a different industry. It's an accounting firm. So how I got into this accounting firm, um, it was through LinkedIn. Um, I always make sure that my LinkedIn is up to date. Um, yeah, don't sleep on LinkedIn. Like, take your LinkedIn seriously, guys. Um, so that's how I got the job. Um, I don't remember when I applied for it, actually, because I was surprised when I got the call back. I had forgotten. When they called me, I'm like, ma? <laughs> oh, hi. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they took very long to respond. 
Um, but yeah, I was basically going through the process of looking for another opportunity. Um, if my former manager sees this, um, <laughs> you know it was time though. But yeah, like it's not personal. I love you and I love the team and I love the company. It was just time. We spoke about this. But anyway, um, yeah, it was through LinkedIn. Um, I was re basically ready to step out of what I was comfortable with, which was insurance, because I've been doing it for the past three years. So I was like, no, I want to see how I can apply the skill that I have in a completely different industry because I'm comfortable now. I'm so comfortable. So let me put my skills to the test and start from scratch somewhere else. So LinkedIn, to answer the question, LinkedIn. I went on LinkedIn and I sent in my application, got the call back, went through the interview process. Um, yeah, did I answer the question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for sure, for sure. The interview process, how, how, how did you make, how did you prepare for it? Make sure that I'm gonna ace this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what, I, yeah, okay. I feel like, I understand the, the state we're in right now in South Africa, especially when it comes to employment. You may be patient. Like, you really need to be patient with the process. Um, I got a lot of offers. I was headhunted by a lot of companies. But I knew what I wanted, so I wasn't just picking anything and everything. So you really have to be patient and don't just take whatever comes your way just giving advice mm -hmm. um but yeah you you have to be patient and what I did to prepare myself because I had been with the insurance company for over three years like I said I'm comfortable I've been out of the job market for three years you know that's quite a long time the way CVs mm -hmm look now like the format of cvs how cvs look now is different from how they looked when i applied for the job to the insurance company um the interview styles like a, a lot of things have changed the technology has changed as well then maybe you could send your cv to an hr person but now, like the systems of applying for the job are more, there's a lot of technology. You get flagged really quickly because like technology has developed. Um, so yeah, you have to be really patient. But one thing that I did, I literally went to YouTube. I went to, every time I got an interview, I would accept it. Yeah. Because I feel like you get the experience when you're having the interview like this, you know? So the first time after three years of being off the job market and I'm meeting a recruiter and I'm like, tell me about yourself. How do I answer that question again? So yeah, I did a whole lot of research, indeed.com, job, what do they, yeah. I went to all those job, job portals, portals yeah. and see what is, um, happening in the industry right now. How do they put the descriptions of the jobs? What do they say? What are the keywords that are there? Um, watched a lot of interviews. So I'm low-key a nerd. So on my YouTube, I literally have a playlist of like from years ago of how to prepare for an interview. So I went back to those things. Before I got the, the job at the insurance company, I went back to that a YouTube playlist. I go, okay, Kunze, what did I learn? Okay, let me rewatch again. Yeah. What are the recruiters saying? Okay, and then practice. Like, I did this. I went on a, uh, to the mirror and <laughs> I had a script. Yeah, tell me about yourself. Like, the common questions. I literally had a script. Like, okay, this is what I need to say about myself and my skills. This is how I need to portray myself. How's my page? How do I sound? Do I look upset while I'm saying it? Do I look like I don't trust myself while I'm saying these things about myself? Or do I look like, like I'm badass? So yeah. how do I look? So I literally went to the mirror and practiced like, 
I mustn't care. I'm a business <laughs> analyst. I've been doing blah, 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 blah. So yeah, a lot of YouTube, a lot of reading, a lot of practicing, yeah. a lot of going to interviews, a lot of L's until I got to a point where I started getting comfortable now. The more interviews that I started getting, the more people started headhunting me, the more I kept on refining my LinkedIn account here and there. It, it makes such a big change. Like, yeah. like for a business analyst, I know when I started adding the word agile, to my link, it made sure, such a sure, huge sure. difference. I'm like, whoa, you know, that's where we're going now. So I started making those tweaks here, mentioning those keywords in my interviews. Because I, one thing I picked up, because I also pay attention to the people that are interviewing me on the other side. When you, when you speak and when you're speaking about your job, you see that example I made in the beginning of describing what a business analyst does. Yeah. When I explain it as if I'm telling my six year old brother, you, you can tell that I know what I'm talking sure, about. Sure. Cool, that's good. But for a recruiter and you're trying to get a job, you can't speak like that. Mm -hmm. They're not five years old. So you need to know your audience. So I, I had to tune myself like, okay, start using the actual words that the recruiters want to hear. Yes, you know the, the concepts and everything, but start using the, the words. Instead of saying the, the people that are in the stakeholders, yeah, 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 yeah. use the Instead right of saying customers, users, yes, yeah, kind of use things. the right and, jargon, yeah. yeah. And I can never actually stress the idea of using LinkedIn properly enough because I I I feel like that is the 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 space where if you're really looking for spun, if you do it right, then you become the price. You know what I mean? And speaking of being a price, uh, since Neribu Agadi interviews, I think one thing that has shifted in my mind is how I think and look at interviews. I think about and look at interviews. When I go into an interview, I'm not begging for a job, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and I know that uh, the employer is not looking at me as somebody who is begging for a job, but I'm somebody who's there to present my value, and the company comes to me to present their value. So let's see if we align. Yeah. I think that also has a tendency to instill some sort of confidence when you get into the interviews, how 100. you engage with your uh, um, interview yeah. interviewers. But importantly, you need to know what you're talking about <laughs> because there's some things that you can bullshit your way through, yeah. you know, but <laughs> if you're talking to head of department yeah. now, there's things that Longhori can never really sure. bullshit. Yeah. Like if somebody came to you and say customers, nobody really uses customers in detail. Yeah. We use users. And if you say <laughs> users, it can change how they think and look at you as a person and it can, make, it can help you stand, stand out. And on your profile, you talk about MetaBoost that, 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 that you did, Lay Digify. I was quite curious to learn what that is because I also had a lot of people talking about Digify being this cool uh, organization that helps digital marketers. That's the little that I know, and I don't mean to speak for you <laughs> or speak for Digify. Okay. <laughs> Can you please uh, help us understand, Jorge, uh, who is Digify and how were you involved in the MetaBoost um, okay. program? Yeah. Okay. Um... Okay, firstly, like you're saying, you're not gonna, you don't want to speak for me. Yeah. I also don't want to speak for them sure. because sure. I'm not an employee at Digify. Digify Africa also has its own PR people that are signed to talk about Digify and sure. stuff. So I just want to put it on record, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, but from my perspective um, and my experience with Digify and um, what I know since I've been working there, it's been over three years now, working as a consultant. So What are you consulting in? For digital marketing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so let me start off by sharing. So now, okay, we're gonna we're gonna talk about digital marketing. Hurry, it's fine because never work a BA and then no. Now it's digital. You're doing digital yeah. marketing, so yeah. Yeah. Sure. So I've been doing them concurrently. Sure. That's yeah. the right word, ne? Uh, simultaneously. Simultaneously, concurrently. Concurrently. Yeah. Concurrently, at the same time. Yeah. Zaza, zaza, I approve. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I. The whole time I've been doing business analysis, I've still been pursuing digital marketing. Um, even when I got into the insurance company, I declared to them that 
yeah, you are finding me as somebody who wants to pursue a career in business analysis. However, I have a background in digital marketing. I've been a digital marketer before I became a business analyst. Before I got into Muzi, I was working as a digital marketing um, specialist. So I still have this background. I didn't drop it so that I can become a business analyst. So I'm going to be a business analyst in your organization, but as an individual in my own capacity, I'm going to continue with my passion for digital marketing. Sure. And they're like, oh, okay, cool, because obviously they need to do conflict of interest checks. Um, the things that I'm doing this side, are they a duplicate of this side? Yeah. The services that I'm doing this side, are, they got, are the same services that I'm doing this side? Because if that's the case, then conflict of interest yeah, yeah, that means yeah. like give it this information and now the company is at risk so i had to declare to both organizations even when i was at digify starting out i told them that yes i'm going to continue doing um this digital marketing um stuff however I have a job in an insurance company. This is what I do. I don't think it's going to conflict in any way. However, I did mention to both companies that it's going to be of benefit to you because the projects that I was doing in the, in the insurance company, I was in the digital space. So it, it makes sense that I continue doing this thing, yeah, marketing, yeah, digital marketing, because it adds value to the company. Not the exact information, but because I'm sharp, I know what is up to date, I know the systems, the technologies. Whenever I come into the space of being a business analyst within the digital marketing space, I'm adding so much yeah. because outside of my nine to five, there's so much more that I bring into the space. Live on, I'm about digital marketing. As a business analyst, there are certain skills and tools that I've been getting within the insurance company as a business analyst that are adding so much to my skill um, within the digital marketing space and as a speaker. So it just gels, it just makes sense. Um, so yeah. It makes for like a, an awesome alignment with mm. the team. Let's say you're a BA mm. working with a marketing team. Uh, and now there's things, you lose each other. Maybe it's the jargon, maybe it's how things are done. True. So when you come as messenger, you can say, hey guys, I, I, I don't think that will work <laughs> because of this and this and this yeah, and that. Yeah, definitely. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that is dope. But um, let's go back and talk about um, Meta. What was that program? Uh, I'm, I'm going to break it down sure. in like sequences. That's how I think. Um, and I think you're going to get it like that as well. I always think about the person who's watching. Yeah, yeah. And you, <laughs> Okay. So let, let's start with Digify. Digify Africa. Digify, Digify Africa. That's, Digify Africa is a non-profit organization. So we've spoken about Umuzi. If you're familiar with Umuzi, that's the same thing that Digify does. It's a direct competitor of Umuzi. They also focus on giving um, young black talent um, digital marketing skills, uh, the Digi for, digi for digital. Um, so they focus on giving young black um, unemployed youth digital marketing skills. After you go through like the boot camp and the courses, you get your digital marketing qualification with some certification, then you get placed and you'll find a job. So that's one of the offerings that Digify Africa. They've got uh, another section to them where they offer uh, training to small business owners on how to be savvy with digital, um, how to market their businesses better on digital platforms. Um, they also have a section where they focus on young kids and how they can be safe um, through these digital platforms. So the focus is very digital. It's all about um, imparting knowledge to various groups, um, especially black, young black people. So that's what Digify basically does. Okay, so there's Digify Africa and then there's Meta Boost, which is a program within Digify Africa. Meta, um, for those who don't know, is what we used to refer to as Facebook because Facebook... Um, is, a, is, is an application, a social media application amongst Instagram threads. What else now? WhatsApp. Yeah. yeah. So those are social media applications. But Meta is now a company that is, hold, it's a holding company for these applications, right? So Meta, 
which is this project. You see, I'm speaking in my, with my hands now. <laughs> okay, now Meta, um, Meta Boost. This is a project that we are working on to impart um, information about Facebook services to small business owners. So like I mentioned, within uh, Meta, there's Facebook, there's WhatsApp, there's Instagram, there's Threads now. So what we do at, um, for this project Whenever we have small businesses that need to learn more about social media, uh, social media platforms, but specific to Meta. So they, we're not talking anything about TikTok. Um, um, we're not talking about Pinterest, Twitter. Twitter. No, only Meta services. So these are the apps, but there are also services like, what do they call that one? It's got articles. I forgot. But yeah, just all the services for Meta. So what we do at Meta Boost, have those sessions, teach small business owners. This is how you use Facebook business. This is how you use Instagram business. This is how you turn your personal account into a business account. This is how you look at the analytics of your social media pages so that you can make data-driven um, decisions for your business. So if you see that, okay, I post a picture and I'm selling water, people like the original flavor compared to the sparkling flavor. So you're getting feedback from your actual potential customers and existing customers. So start stocking up more on the original compared to the sparkling because you're getting feedback yeah. online that this is what people like. So that's what we do at Meta. We spoke about all these platforms and how businesses can use them, but let's talk about how you can use them. I saw you on YouTube. Uh, you have a couple of uh, videos where you essentially talk about how to use these tools, you know, uh, which I think it's really dope. Uh, shout out, you can check it, give my the BA, right? Consult the BA. Consult the BA, yeah. sure. Out of all these platforms that are available, because yes. it can be very hard to pick which one is the right one for you. You're active on quite a lot of them, <laughs> but I still want to understand which one would you say you enjoy the most and what's the reason for that? I love TikTok. Yeah. Yeah, so you've been doing the things on TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. TikTok is addictive. <laughs> <laughs> Do you also dance uh, on TikTok? I don't dance yeah. yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> still thinking about it or yes. still learning the moves? But I know, yes, he is. TikTok is how you say to my face. The TikTok, it's a TikTok is right. a nah, it isn't. My mom okra answered her for like an hour. Give me shavila. I scroll through TikTok and I'm like, wow, this woman. My siblings, young ones, talk and I'm like, what is TikTok doing to our people? I can write the TikTok. Let's talk to me. Why would you say it's the right one for you? As a user. Yeah. <laughs> like as a user. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not as a creator. As a creator. Let's actually break it down into two. Let's talk about uh, the benefits for the user and for the creator. Um, I really enjoy TikTok. Um, I enjoy TikTok because it's user-generated content. Um, <laughs> I feel like, I don't know if you guys remember, at some point there was an application called Voove. I was a part of Voove. I think actually TikTok was Vuv pre yeah. before and then they rebranded, changed the name. No. Yeah, Vuv is a it's Vuv is under Tencel. Tencel is a company. Okay. Uh, TikTok, what is it? I don't know what it's under, but it's not the same thing. Okay. But TikTok right. is definitely what Vuv was supposed to be. And I, I don't know, it, it was either ahead of time or I don't know, the, the, the strategy wasn't so great because I can tell you, Guti, with Vuv, they focused a lot on celebrities, which is what Vuv, which is what TikTok is not doing. TikTok is focused on the end user, which is what Vuv was also trying to push. Like, be on this platform, create your own content, have fun with it. You see TikTok, everybody's on TikTok doing their own thing. Yep. People's careers are, like, flying yeah. because yep. it's user-generated content. Content, excuse me. And Vuv spent a lot of money on 
celebrities, abo kanyimbao, abo somizi, you know, like our favorite celebrities, and they would only go on the platform every now and then because they paid to do that. You know what I'm saying? So just go there, be live. But it wasn't like... It wasn't like content, man. One, one taller. Get, get content, like It wasn't like content that you would get from celebrities or, you know, interesting day in the life type of thing, you know. But yeah, I do feel like TikTok is what Ruth could have been. Um, but anyway, um, that was then, unfortunately. But yeah, TikTok is where it's at. It's user generated. You will find anything and everything on TikTok. Yeah. And I feel like it's a, yeah, it's a better version. Maybe not better, but a, sh- a short, short videos of YouTube also. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's kind of becoming a search engine. You want to know what a review is like. Yako, McDonald, Yako Free State, you will get it on TikTok. You know, like you get real life experiences and. Which books you can read currently? Mm. Just go on TikTok. Yeah, if Guy Ubaladi Wuka, Guy Utonjezari, make money while you sleep, what it's about. (laughs) So maybe I don't have to read it because Guy has told me everything about that book. I'm like, oh, that's dope. It has revolutionized how we interact with social media. You know, we are playing so much, but also there's so much value that's yeah. being added at yeah. the same time. And I feel like you'll find what you're looking for. Yeah, always. Yeah, if, if you want to learn about books, you learn about books. Yeah. If you want to see bums, I don't know if you'll find bums on TikTok. Hey, yeah, you'll find bums you'll on find TikTok. You'll find bums on TikTok? Yeah. Actually, you find bums. Twitter has a very good reputation for bums. Not that far, though. Yeah, Not as hectic Twitter has as... taken to the next level. That's a hub. Hey. <laughs> Twitter hub. <laughs> Twitter your computer let triple X video. <laughs> Direct competition. <laughs> but a lot is changing on TikTok as well. Yeah. With the limits, people don't have badges like they used to. Credibility is changing now and all of that. Twitter has changed so yeah. much. People can buy badges. Yeah. Uh, I saw a hashtag the other day that actually Twitter limited the number of posts or of tweets you can see a day to 600. Yeah. I think that's haven't, ridiculous. I haven't been on Twitter in... Yeah, I exhausted them one, one time and I was like, oh, shit. And Done for the like day? A of days before Threads was <laughs> launching. The timing was so... The timing was perfect. And did you see Threads actually got about 10 million signups in the yeah. first 24 hours? It's amazing. It's yeah. Amazing. Are you on Threads? Not yet. Okay. I'm not there. I feel like it's going to fall off very quickly. I don't think so. I think it's a good time actually to be on threads. Every time a platform is new, you like think about it this way. Um, the people that started on TikTok, when TikTok started, how many followers do they have now? Yeah, a lot. Those were... Early adopt. Exactly. Because my suga bakalanayo, they see the trends, they're changing with the trends sure. and they stay relevant because also the platform itself, like the technology behind all of these platforms is the algorithm. So yeah. the algorithm is gonna favor you because you're interacting. Sure. Oh, sure. guy posted something, let's show people. Oh, guy, let's show people more, 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 more. And you just continue to grow like that. So I think if you're on threads now, yeah, you, you're doing a good thing. Always ah. start with the technology. So you think Threads has the potential to actually kill TikTok, uh, Twitter, I mean, the same way um, Twitter, audio, whatever, killed um, Clubhouse? Because Clubhouse came in and it was so amazing what they were doing. It was doing. so cool. But then the issue with Clubhouse was the exclusivity. Mm. Not everybody has access to it, right? Uh, and then Twitter was like, okay, sure, we're going to actually replicate yeah. the same thing and give everybody access. <laughs> and then it killed Clubhouse. Mm-hmm. Right now, I feel like Threads is, is, is not going to be in the game for too long, but that's just my prediction. Mm-hmm. For many different reasons, people are so comfortable. Getting familiarity mm-hmm. makes people feel easy and comfortable. True. And with Twitter, <laughs> it, it just looks familiar, bro. Like, the people who, who, who are giving you these updates, you already know them, you know. Um, and I also seen people who were on Twitter who jumped to threads. They used the same profile pictures because they have already earned credibility to go to yeah. Twitter. So they use the strategy. Yeah, we're nice. gonna, yeah, and I saw other people jump onto threads and still people's 
profiles from Twitter. You know? <laughs> People are so obsessed about followers, yeah. numbers, likes. It's money. It, yeah, I mean, it's the new economy, yeah, yeah, but yes. it, 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 it's becoming an obsession even for people who are not making money out of it. And I, I, I don't know, sometimes I really feel like it's taking off the authenticity and, you know, people genuinely being themselves. And we're just like online trying to be the people by Lenghore, we know who we are worthy of likes, not really who we are. And that, I think, well, me personally, it makes me very uncomfortable about the person I am online. Are you different online? Uh, How are you online? I am me, but there's still a level of perfection that I want to, you know, achieve. Hey, you push your content. I always make sure, okay, it's dusty. No, it's dusty. So I feel like that takes away from being me for real, for real, for real. Because at the top of my mind, I'm thinking about how other people are going to perceive me. That's just social. The reason we post that, if you're not making money, you want to show other people. So... So yeah, how has it worked for you? So show me that you coining from it. Uh, is it helping you improve your craft? Yeah, um, but yeah, I get what you're saying about like paying attention to every little thing. You become even more self-conscious because sure. you're putting yourself out there. Monetizing on social media. So <clears throat> before I started my career as someone who's in digital marketing or digital marketer, let me call it that, um, it was because I discovered that people make money on social media. And I was like, even me, I want. I want the bag. Um, so a friend of mine by the name of Teddy, I always share the story. Um, Teddy, I think you met him. Yeah. Um, so Teddy worked at, what did I call that company? I would say, Um A dope company. A dope company, uh, a publication, and all about the, uh, media and music. So 2017, Slicker on, um, he told me that um, how he uses his Twitter and he gets invited to events and sh shares his moments about the events that he goes to. Uh, for example, Back to the City. Do you guys remember Back to the City? That's so amazing. Like going to Back to the City, talking about the artist. If there's uh, an artist that is coming up and you share music or your favorite song or if there's a music video that is out and you tell people about the music video, you'll be like the first to get access to that music video and tell people like, whoa, this is so dope, the quality, whatever the case might be. So that's how my journey into marketing started because I started off on Twitter. I was big. I was heavy on Twitter before it became Twitter Hub. Uh, yeah, back then <laughs> when it was still free. Do you guys remember <laughs> MTN gave us free Twitter? I even bought an MTN SIM card, bruh. I was that invested into becoming a digital marketer and getting into the space and being an influencer and monetizing my account. So that's where it started with me. So yeah, so I had my first gig through Slicker On. I started going to events. Oh my gosh, what an amazing time. I even quit my job. Bro, yeah. to go to events. To become an influencer. Oh. Like I, I, I was doing, <laughs> yeah, I literally quit. I was like, guys, um, it's Easy. been great. <laughs> I get paid to tweet. I'm gone. Oh. So I left, focused on my digital marketing career, started getting gigs. Um, plus back then I did a lot of um, tips on growing natural hair. And so I had a following based on what I would share on how to take care of your natural hair and stuff like that. So yeah, I did monetize. I worked with a couple of brands. Nice. Um, so yeah, I made money. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of money then, but I didn't have the responsibilities sure, that I have sure, now. Yeah. But it was good, good enough for me to even quit my job. And yeah, right now am I monetizing? Not necessarily as an influencer, because the content that I'm putting out now, it's stuff that I like and things that I think people find value in. So my day-to-day -day experiences or things that I find that I think are really interesting, I'll share my honest opinion on my social media platforms, that type of a thing, especially on, on TikTok. Yeah. yeah, I'm really enjoying TikTok because everything is fast. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of engagement um, compared to all the other platforms that I've used so far. So 
yeah um i think another cool thing is within the consult the ba which is my little small business digital marketing business do you work on the business alone Yes, I'm alone at the moment because I've got a 95. So I don't always have capacity um, to take on clients. But when I do, I do take on clients, sure, sure. Um, that type of a thing. So, so I'd get clients maybe like TMC would say, Masinkle, we'd like to consult. How do we go from here to there? Uh, we need a strategy, content ideas, that type of a thing. So sure. I'll analyze, look at your mm-hmm. analytics because even though people are on social media, but they don't fully know how to use their analytics, which is what we do at Meta. You know what I'm saying? So if maybe I'm in a session and somebody reaches out to say, oh, based on that session, that group session we had, you spoke about analytics. I don't have time for that. Oh, I don't fully understand that. How much are your services for you to take on that role? Maybe for three months, then I'd make a bag like that because I have these relationships with the people that I teach Uh, people see what I do like oh that's fascinating that's beautiful how can we work so yeah but not full-time yeah so was it Umuzi that uh, got you off the streets like I mean what I mean is that I get you like being an influencer (laughs) (laughs) which means you spend most of your time on the road Uh, Um, so was it Umuzi that actually got you off Uh, the influencer job? No. I just got really busy with a lot of stuff. I just had a lot on my plate. And while I was at Umuzi, that's like 2018. 19. 2019. Yeah. Yeah, somewhere there. So I was transitioning and I was, I had a lot on my plate and I had goals that I wanted to hit. So I was focusing on, on my targets, um, so that I can invest back into this thing that I want to do, which yeah, is yeah, the yeah. business and the social media. So I put a post so that I can invest in my skills that will feed into, you know, the business and just me as a brand and yeah, yeah. my skills. So, And I feel like in this space, that is a very, very necessary quality, you know, the ability to know when to actually take a break on other things so that you can start a new thing it can be very daunting sometimes you like because you of our fear of failing you know you end up chilling or spacing because it's just comfortable i like Uh, it i know how to do i can do this in my sleep at me guys (laughs) you know how do you now say I, i want to beat this fear of failing I'm going to park this bus and now take the train. Hey, it's, it's, hey, you, you are hitting. Somewhere. Yeah, like I feel that way even now that I'm starting a new job. I'm sure it was a hard decision to make. It wasn't easy, especially because I genuinely, you say like that message I was saying to my manager, if you watch, I genuinely loved my team. I loved what I did. I loved the space that I was in. I genuinely felt like this is where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. This, these are my people. This is my space. I'm going to own it. And, but yeah, anyway, um, just beating that feeling, feeling like, am I lying? <laughs> Like, are they going to, like, see that I, I, um, I'm just finessing this thing? Like, it's, it's not really real. But you really... You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. imposter oh, oh, syndrome. Yeah, that imposter syndrome. Like, even now, um, where the company that I'm working at now, I just joined, like, two weeks ago. And immediately I was assigned to do something. And I'm... In my mind, I just thought that I'm going to be, you know, taking it easy because it's a new industry. So I still have to learn the industry. I still have to learn the company. But already they're like, like, get into it. You know what I'm saying? And I always have to tell myself, if you were not good for that, you would not be here. They picked you because you're good at this. They had a lot of other candidates, but they picked you to do what you got to do. So do it, because you can do it. Sure. You've been doing it. Sure. So do it. Just do it. How flop out the flop? Just hey, it's a Just get it out. And then I have to do it shaking, like oh, I'm not sure. Okay. And Gemina, guys, people don't know this about me, but 
I can procrastinate. And then Zoshala. And this it, this fear will cripple me like I will. It's really happening. Why Babu Zangina? Why they that time it's my job. Why are they asking me? Like, why do they think oh, I know? Yeah, like, like really? Who, it mustn't, like, come on, I just got here. But I'm like, no, they trusted you. So trust yourself. Just do it. If you don't get it right, they'll show you how to do it right. Just do it. Just do it. Do it. Then I'll just do it afraid. Yeah. Do it feeling inadequate. Yeah. I saw, do fail, learn, repeat. I yeah. saw that, yeah. yeah. That resonates. So, and yeah. failing, I think, is one thing people take for granted because it's not what, um, the, you know, the schooling system teaches us to do. Like, you have to get everything right or else yes. you Yes, yes. You know what I mean? You're a so failure. You get now people who get into workplaces um, got that mindset, I can't afford to fail. Uh. So much so it cripples them, like you say, like they end up not being able to be their best selves because they're done. And I think this new wave of creatives and people in the digital spaces who are not afraid to fail is actually elevating the great things that people are doing because now people, people just want to try things out. If they fail, they know that they can always try again. Yeah. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. And I think, you know, everyone would actually instill that in their mind. You know what? I got nothing to lose from doing it. Even if I fail, what I would have gotten out with is a way on how not to do this thing successfully. Your love for public speaking. Yeah. Uh, a little baby would be like, I must enjoy public speaking. <laughs> and she does it very well. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Where, where did you pick uh, um, you know, this excitement around public speaking? I grew up very shy. Masente, don't lie to us. Yeah, I, I know. I know it doesn't show, but mm-hmm. I grew up shy. Nixa buwi, nixa jivey, nixa... And then I got... I think I got out of my eyes, my shell, when I got to tertiary, and I was just like, hey, man, wouning kituti, like... Ha, le kituti, now, kimuhulu, no. And, you know, let me just... Let me just be. Let me you just be. Yo. I don't believe you. We understand when it's a tertiary. Yeah. Only when I got to tertiary. Everybody that knows me before tertiary, when they see me now, they're like, yo. What <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> wow. Like, yeah. this is awesome. No. Yeah. It's not that, you know, like you forget me. I just be. And I wanted to be forgotten and not seen. Like, I think being Saba, you know that fear you're talking about? Sure, like, sure. Saba, like, what if I put myself out there, then I get rejected? Or I put myself out there and I don't fit? It's uncomfortable to, like, to have to present myself. Like, so I was caged in for such a long time. I think when I got to tertiary, I was like, effort. Gary Brenda. I don't go by my first name anymore. You guys probably don't even know. Don't ask me. I'm not going to tell you. You mustn't know. And this is who I am. And this, I think it was great because I'm getting into tertiary. It's not the spaces that I was in and everything that I experienced then. I'm in a new space now. Nobody knows me. So I was like, oh, perfect. I can choose who I want to be now. And I'm going to be that person that I want to be. And I was just like, oh. <laughs> and yeah, I think as soon as I started getting out of my shell, also seeing how people are receiving me as who I am was like, oh, refreshing. Oh, this is who you are. Okay, it's good to get to know you, you know. And I stopped being afraid. And I, I must say, like, shout out to my mom. My mom would always be like, no, Ushabu, or this or that, you know, like hyping me up. And those things stuck. Yeah. And I was bullied. So. Always thinking about my bullies, like, the things that I wanted to say back to them or the things they would bully me for, I'd want to own those things. And then I started owning it. And I was like, you know what? It's either you take it or you go. So 
Um, and then I started speaking more. Um, I enjoyed in, engaging with people. Um, when I got opportunities to speak in public platforms, I wouldn't be afraid. I'd come alive. Nice. You know, like, so now I'm getting to know myself better. I'm like, actually, I enjoy it. attention. And I'm like, but like, it's okay. Like, and I give it like tall. So, okay, let me put myself out there. It's okay. Those who receive me, they do. Those that don't, they don't. Yeah, I started going live on social media. But you know, that thing I told you about MTN and Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. started putting myself out there online. Um, you know, the more I share information that people are looking for, the more people come closer, yeah, which yeah, is what yeah. you guys are doing here. I don't know if you guys know Chris Du, but he always says, when you're still starting out as a creative, you have to be of service and of value to others. Then people will come to you. Then maybe you'll start presenting a product or a service that you can sell to them but you've got their buy-in because you've given so much to them so yeah I started putting myself out there um, started doing public speaking gigs and yeah I was like this is my thing I really love sharing information and it's cool that I can do it online and I can do it face to face as well and I just keep getting better and better and better because you see people's feedback if you're talking and people are like so, so like move and now it's it's your job because you're you're in France so like find ways so yeah it's, it's been awesome oh, wait, oh, are you gonna do it more yeah definitely do you take uh, calls to speak at I haven't gotten any of those it's because I've been focusing a lot on my nine to five so like from nine to five nine to five there's nine to five time yeah. so <laughs> Like on the weekends, like if I get an opportunity, then sharp. If I get an opportunity after my nine to five, I'm definitely doing that. That's how I've been sustaining having the business analyst job and the marketing side of things. So, yeah, definitely. I used to want to be on TV and radio. And when I got to VUV, I was like, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. remote DSTV, no, <laughs> we, you know. We. So, yeah. I, now, I, Umo TMC. No, Umo TMC. <laughs> You see? <laughs> <laughs> One of the other things that Chris do pants on is know your value. Yeah. Uh, know your value, know your value. And that brings me to my next question. <laughs> you weren't expecting this one, I guess. I'm going to ask you about um, the market, the market related salary for a BA. So if somebody <laughs> want to start thinking like somebody's considering becoming a BA as like you know a junior okay. how much can they typically expect to make well this is not exactly what you're making but like what the internet says would be fair to pay a BA yeah quite an interesting question people don't talk about this stuff um like I do get the part where when we have to talk about salaries, especially as black people, um, it informs whoever is coming next to be in a position where they can ask Vela for market related or what fits with their qualifications and their skills. But at the same time, there's that part where you absolutely cannot share everything about yourself because, yeah, it's quite risky and it puts you in a vulnerable space. But I like that you're asking about market-related and not specifically me. Um, I know when I became a business analyst and while we were still at Umuzi, we were doing our own research about how much business analysts yeah. earn. There's this cool <sighs> website, Varigate Talent. Talent yes. survey, find talent, survey talent. Something, it's something like, that. like that. It's yellow, so it has a star. In a little purple. No, it's yellow, but it's talent survey. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. I'm sure if I open my phone in my browser, I'll find it somewhere yeah. there. Um, but yeah, I was excited. I was like, wow, actually, business analysts, there's a there's good coin there. <laughs> Econi coin. And I remember the first figure that I saw was 45,000 rand per month. And I was like... I'm, I'm going to earn 45,000 rand. Can you imagine? This is like three, four years ago. Yeah. I'm going to earn 45,000 rand per month. Man. Yeah, that's where I want to be. Um, however, um, that was 45,000 rand. Like according to, because I just got a job, I've been doing some research on what is market related and all of that. According to like the various sources that I've been looking at, um, about Glassdoor, yeah, sure. Talent, 
what what yeah it's p- when i go to pnet and i look at what business analysts earn so 45000 rand that i was excited about some 3 4 years ago that is 45000 rand for an intermediate business analyst so if you've had um four years four years experience from 45000 you earn from 45000 rand um according to the internet. <laughs> I must say that's according to the yeah, internet. Sure. <laughs> um there's internet and reality. Sure. Um some people make more some people make less. Sure. And I think let me talk about the f- the factors that make more or less. I don't know should I get into that? Yeah, please. I don't quite remember what the junior rate is. I think it's 25 the range is between 25 if I remember correctly. For junior am i push no i'm pushing it actually no i'm lying yeah, yeah. maybe that's what the 15 yeah 15 when you're just joining that's 15000 rand when you're just joining yeah. the internet will tell you that it's about 25 20 mara ent i get you did say there's a the reality the internet yeah, yeah. so <laughs> entry it's about 15 as a junior and as your years keep your experience keeps increasing that like the years go by i get you you become stronger something that takes you four months in ka one week that's why they pay you more yeah. because you're becoming an expert so um when you are intermediate you could earn up to 45000 rand as an intermediate uh business analyst um yeah you think like factors that attribute to your salary yeah we, we just spoke about that hore uh it would typically be years you know yeah. uh the, the the longer you are in your space the higher your earning potential yeah so, yeah, yeah and your competency because not everybody who's been I in a space <laughs> for some people it takes them years and years yes. to complete like three years degree. that is true exactly so even if it doesn't mean you know better than other people yes. because you've been there for 10 years exactly <laughs> it happens and because like times are always changing maybe you you don't have the skills that i needed right now what about now with that part your yeah, agility maybe we are so called like over agile we're not going to waterfall regala so refetsa so and it must be within this time and these conditions but agile no so maybe we are how proficient in agility so maybe how qualify for tsotseng but someone coming in fresh with agility they have more value you know it's yeah so Wait, so this is not an ad for umuzi but they promised us high value jobs and that's exactly what they give yeah they're giving i get right sure mama to high value jobs per yeah. like i think something i tell about don't ever say kai guti when you picking a career even if you're still figuring yourself out we need the cash yeah more like thing regasi bui mark but how hona avoid that too that's what i say to bana ba ko gae and to anybody who's watching how to the opportunity yeah ba cash yeah or a packer yes be grateful for that job somebody else doesn't have it the bag that you're making in that job it's something somebody wouldn't just give you a tsoga a fa ri ke Uh, 2.5 at the end of the month. So yes, be grateful you're getting experience. How do you like on to go to Tamale lang jiga na ne ba bisa jigeleza. How jigeleza? How mahlalela wabo. However, when you do get the opportunity, position yourself in a way that will put you in high value yeah. careers. Yeah. Yeah because it says right it's in manje siguma industry is buying awards mara says phakathi so tsina zanjela nani ukuthi zifake space in some high value high value is ukuthi if you starting here now i value loke yakhuphuka it's like when you buying a Hermes bag i bag ya Hermes i value ya khona i ya phezulu every yaba uyithenga nge 25000 today In the next five years, maybe go by it. Most of the time, most of the time, it's a straight new twenty-five as if it was brand new. Yeah. So, like, think about your career in 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 that way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they put us on. Umuzi put us on. They did so much. Masenta, we've spoken about money. We've spoken about how to become a BA. We've spoken about social media. But I think everyone. has a moment my long hore their mental also needs to take priority mm. right yeah. and if not you find people breaking apart uh we've seen our friends uh take their lives it's becoming very common thread now um and also 
on the same breath, there's quite a lot of people who are becoming conscientized on the importance of, you know, mental health. Yeah, yeah. And I just wanted us to touch into that. Hanyani, let's talk about uh, mental health. How, how important is that to you? Extremely. That take me, give me more. Cool. So I'll tell you why it's extremely important. These high value jobs that we're talking about, great, have it. <laughs> Have it, it's good for you, it's good for you now, it's good for you in the next 5, 10, 20 years. You know what I'm saying? And you can pivot into like different directions and it keeps you up to date. But the pressure, the pressure, I'm talking about. It's pressure. Or uh, ten past, or <laughs> ten past four. Ten past four. Give me a guy more my TikTok. Give me a guy more. What's a long? Yeah, it's a lot. It's really strenuous. There's a lot of pressure every day. It doesn't get better. And when it does get better, it gets better for like two minutes and then you hit the ground running again. So yeah, there's a lot of pressure. The pressure is not only from the workplace. Pressure, more life Pressure, the relationship being. Sure. Pressure financially. How do you feel? Um, on, on today, like I, I was in the shower and I'm just like, yeah. Every day, I want to get a sister. <laughs> Every day. Or improvise. Ah, the story is all about the Bala. Based on a true story. Yeah. I can't so believe the story is yeah. yeah. Like I'm living those stories. They wrote oh. about you before you were here. Bro, <laughs> I was like, what if I didn't read that? Maybe it was never gonna happen. Mm. Maybe now it's in my subconscious because I read about this story. Bro, can't that's hey. life. Can't that's life. Can't you? Bupi lo ki si ston. Bupi lo ki si Wow. But yeah. Ay, wame ti rapila. Ha. Kwa kha ne mara rapila. Ripila bu drama ke zi. Content ya drama ke zin. Content the drum makers get drum. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, now nah, for real, hey, yo. Pew. To answer the question, mental health is really important because you will drown. You, like you drown in in. Let me not say you. Let me bring it back to me. I drown. I drown in my work. Like, it's so much. There's so much pressure. The expectations have been high. I set myself high expectations. I, I'm so ambitious. It's good, but sometimes it's my downfall because I'll be like, the standard must be here. And then I'll hit that standard. Now, every time everybody expects me to be here, I've put that pressure on myself. Now I need to rise above this because it's going to become mediocre because everybody expects you to perform at this point. And I put it on myself, which it's, it's badass, it's dope, but it's exhausting, it's tiring. Sometimes you just want to be like the other colleague that you have who is lazing around. You just also sometimes want to have... like Because if you start getting as lazy as the one that's known for being lazy you get pointed out as incompetent. Mm -hmm. And you, I have, let me stop saying you, I'll have a battle with myself, like, hi, Bo, like, how can you take it easy? It's just once, yeah. hi, Bo, like, the bar is already high. You can, like, let it go for this. It's, it's uh, But it's like, no, you got to stay on that level. I said it, the pressure you keeps on. Hi, you know, so... Yeah, it becomes mentally taxing, physically taxing. And sometimes because I don't just focus on one area, like I said, if I do have an opportunity, maybe I'll take a, a gig on the side. Yeah. 
when I'm taking the gig on the side, it's, I took the gig on the side because things are quiet this side, so I can juggle. But as soon as I take this, I never know what's going to happen tomorrow. Next thing, boo, silly define it. It's a how. Go that bar, define it, say, take them there. Now it's a lot to juggle, you know. And I know last year I even burnt out. I, I, the doctor was like, yeah, I burnt out. They were like, you're stressed, you're tense. I could be killed in massaging the guy and say, I'm not, I'm not, I'm tense. Hey, Gugu, Lena Kakuta, like, I'm tense. I, I'm not even socializing like I used to. I don't go out anymore. The hole is getting deeper. It's getting darker because I'm not even seeing the people that I enjoy engaging with. I'm not doing the activity. I'm gaining weight. <laughs> it's so hard to bend this weight. Yeah, so... Mental health, please take care of your mental health. Go to the gym. I, I, I don't know how many times I'm starting over because when work holds me like this, I stop because I'm just like, oh my gosh. And then I stop and then I have to start again. But yeah, stop and start again however many much as you can. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really important. Is that the only way you deal with your mental issues? Uh, I used to go to therapy while I was in Umuzi. I haven't been doing that. I'm pro going to therapy. Um, I don't know. I feel like I haven't been going because I'm trying to practice the things that I learned. I can't like rely always on going to therapy. So I'm putting myself in a position where I'm like, the things that they told you, like the implement, they like see results and see how you can get better. Yeah. Um, so what am I doing? I'm going to the gym. I'm drinking water. I do stuff that make me happy. I go out. I always try to pull back into myself, like go tameli lang. I take in some sun because. But how jigeles in it? Ah, ang jigeles. Aksi. Yeah, that's how jigeles. You taking vitamin D? Yeah, just putting in some vitamins. Yeah, doing yeah, stuff that I like. Yeah, yeah. Thanks so much for, 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 for sharing that. I think mental health is really, really, extremely important. Yeah. yeah. Um, Masintla, we're going to close it now. But before we do that, um, what's next for Masintla, the BA? What are you currently working on? What can we be on the lookout for? Okay, so at the moment, because I just started a new job, my focus is on, you know, I think... For those who are starting new careers, you guys will relate to Uti. It gets scary. Um, you have to make new connections. You don't know anybody there. You're not friends with anybody. So you're trying to get to know new people, how they work. So that's where my focus is right now. My focus is on um, getting a baby right now. <laughs> 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 Not that day. Not that baby. Not that baby. Oh, okay, but okay. if that baby comes, I will welcome that baby. Oh, but I'm the baby. fur baby. Oh. Yeah, remember I said I like dogs. Yes, I want a fur baby. So that baby. <laughs> yeah, I'm working on that baby. Um, and... Yeah, Meta Boost is also going to continue. So look out for that. Do I'm gonna put on Digify Africa now. Um, do check out Digify Africa to stay up to date. Um, if you stay up to date with Meta Boost, perhaps you catch up with my sessions, and I'll be your trainer. If you want to learn more about social media and how to grow it for your business, and I don't know what else. I'm ready to receive whatever blessings come into my life. But that's what I know of right now, but whatever else is coming. Yeah, yeah. Congrats. Wow. Yeah. So, so yeah, um, that's, I just want to be happy. That's yeah. what I want to focus on. Love that energy. I love the energy. Masinte, uh, from myself and everybody at TMC, we're rooting for you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, yeah. that. Thank you for doing this. You've been beautiful. You've been very insightful and we, we love it. Keep, it. keep it that way. Thank keep you so much. Keep doing what you do. Yeah, Roshevi, you know, we're getting inspired to wake up every day and do it so that we can, you know, maintain the standard. Yeah, yeah. But fair too. And that is how we come to the end of this amazing episode. Lopo, like, you see, 7 
with the goat and mustn't let the BA. Okay, so guy, can you paint the picture in words as a copywriter? Uh, yeah, you've got those words. No, but I'm not, uh, mustn't, I don't, I don't identify as a copywriter. But anyway, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. But you have that experience though. I do, I do. Yeah. So with your beautiful words, can you please paint the picture for us of what your dream of TMC looks like? If you could make it what you want it to be right here, right now, and I had a wand and I said, Boop, what does that look like? Yeah. You see, when you go to the library, you go there because you are interested in learning something new and you know for a fact that you're going to find that information in the library. Uh, what you just need to do is to go to a specific shelf and then pick out a book. So I want TMC to be a digital, a digital version of that. That's where I see TMC. Everybody interested in learning about creativity and technology, they can just walk into a library, pick out the book and start learning. That's cool. Yeah. I hope I did. I did my best. Yeah, thank you. Because I said paint a picture, I just saw TMC and you guys shooting in a library. Yeah. Oh, okay. I like that. I like that. You know? I really love it. Yeah. You know? I love it, sure. <laughs> That's what I saw. You could actually do that. That would be really cool. Hey guys, you're watching season two, episode seven of TMC. It's been awesome having you here and we hope we'll get to see you on the next video. Don't forget to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment. Sasha Bella Fela, subscribe. Bye. Bye. See you all for Bye. 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 Bye.